Hey guys, well today I am building an airsoft mask and um, at first I had it all epoxied together and it, it held fine, it looked good, but it wasn't strong enough and the epoxy had just broke the pieces, dropped, fell out into my plates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rivet it together. But before I get into any of that, I'm just going to explain sort of what I've got here. Um, it's not just junky pieces of plastic like it kind of looks like at the moment. What I had was a cat door that came with these plastic sheets. These are the inner linings to your cat door and I didn't end up using them so I had all this leftover plastic. That's the material that I actually used. Um, they're a little longer, this is just a cut off of the material. So as you can see it's about yay thick. Um, pretty thin stuff. But strong enough to hold off a, a BB of plastic or metal BB. So. Um, going 400 feet, 500 feet per second. So, there you go. What I did was I used a heat gun, which I've got right here, and I got it so it was malleable enough that I could just mold it with my hands. And I bridged it around my nose, built a, um, basically this this one piece, and I built, started off with my mouthpiece, with, I drilled holes in that will um, let me breathe without fog, like, basically, um, getting all, you know what I mean, like smothering me pretty much, so it, it vents nicely. And then I painted it with Krylon camo paint. And that piece goes on like so, so I have my nose cover, and then my mouth guard. And then this little piece just goes on here as, as a final piece for my chin. And I'm going to now rivet them together, just by drilling the parts out, um, because the epoxy did not work. Yeah, uh, but however, I've got these glue spots that show me exactly where to put it together from my design and how it fits my face because I did mold this to my face to some degree, so it at least fits somewhat comfortably. So um, I'm basically ready to drill my holes. I'm going to put three rivets on each of these tabs, and I'm going to put two rivets on this chin piece. So it's basically the plan here. Uh, I'll find my. Uh, I just bought this rivet case today, so I shall see about finding the right size rivet. So we got this tool, which looks like to me I can use the short rivets because it's a short, small piece. There's no point in using these big honking ones, otherwise I'm going to have pieces poking me in the face more or less. So I'm going to use these little guys. So now I need to find a drill bit that fits so. And I already know that that one's too big. So we'll just quickly pull out these pop rivets here and dump them out. So I'm going to need, hmm, those might be a tad small my use. I'm going to go with next size up. These are a bit small. Um, I'm worried that they're going to be a little too weak for my application. I want to go big or go home, but I don't want to go too big. So, so I'm going to go one size up. So I'm not going with the smallest rivet. I'm going with the second one up from that. And what the size is, I really don't know. But that's it right there. So I need six for the face plate and two for the chin. There's six. I really don't like the way these guys package this stuff. They make it very difficult. Okay, so there we go. So we take our drill. We're gonna find the right size drill bit that's gonna fit these rivets. like to me it is that size right there now I'm I size it by sight I don't bother reading and going with numbers I'm horrible with numbers so I just size it by sight that's a very easy way to do it there's no point getting all mathematical um, it's for the engineers and I'm not an engineer nor would I ever take pride in being one no offense to any engineers out there, by the way. It's just not for me. I'm not that anally retentive. 
I hope I just didn't piss off a bunch of people. So what I'm doing is I'm drilling my first hole for my first rivet. And once I get it sort of roughly in, it'll be a lot easier to get my other rivets. So we find the right size device for those who don't know how to use a rivet tool. You'll want that one there. So we're going to unthread this. We want this adapter because this one's definitely too big. Um, you might be able to use a bigger size. I don't know. Um, I figure you might as well use it just the way it's meant to be used. So we're going to put the right size connector on here. This is the um, the tube that holds your rivet so when you put your clamp on there you can grab it and then you pull it through and that's how you get your rivets on. So put that just in all the way like so and you're going to want to hold it a little bit of pressure. It's been a while since I've actually um, done riveting. Oh dear. Okay, I need a slightly bigger um, bigger drill bit. I need the next size up. That's okay. It's better to be undersized than oversized. That one looks a bit bigger to me. Yeah, okay, this is it. So we're just going to drill that hole out again with just a slightly bigger size here. And that'll be our start. And once we got it started, it'll be actually a lot easier to put it, start putting this thing together. Okay, so we'll grab our rivet tool again. And I just use an ever so slight application of pressure here. And we'll push this through worked and push that through and then snaps it off and you got one rivet in so we're going to put now the other side in there we go stick another rivet we'll pull that out put that in it really doesn't take very long to do at all once you got it started. So there. That's probably strong enough, but just to keep to my plan, like I said, I'm going to put ahead and go big. I'm going to go with all three that I wanted to put in there. And then we'll go ahead and put our chin piece on. And our faceplate will almost be ready. This drill is a piece. There. When I say piece, I mean piece of shit. This, uh, on the Milwaukee, this, oh, it's not even Milwaukee, that's why. I thought I bought a Milwaukee. I got a Make Tech. It's a knockoff drill. So, yeah, the, it sucks, but it gets my job done. It's all that matters. Okay. So, we'll just quickly rivet those in. And we're laughing here. Will be really, and of course I'm going to throw another coat of Krylon paint on top of this to um, so these rivets are not shiny little piercings on my mask. Now this is for airsoft, not paintball. Uh, these are going to get cut to shape my glasses that I'm going to wear, so my face, front face, nose, mouth, all that are protected from flying babies so I don't lose a my eyes but also don't lose my teeth or potentially break my nose that kind of stuff so there we go and the reason I'm camming it is it can be worn with my ghillie suit and I know I could go out and buy spend a lot of money on buying an actual mask whatnot but the reason I don't want to do that is that this fits better um, with my rifle. Those masks hold you out. It's hard to find where you're shooting at, um, looking down sights and things like that. It just gets in the way. This just makes it everything easier for me. So we're going to put on this chin piece now. So I just have to put two rivets. I 
better get the rivet in there so it's all lines up. So you can all drill your all your holes first if you really want. The reason I don't recommend it is that you're not going to get them necessarily lined up properly unless you do it sort of one at a time here. There we go. So there. And now to get this one on. So all this will need is a coat of Krylon paint and it is almost done. Um, I've cut holes to put on an elastic band to hold it to my face um, when the time comes. I don't have that material yet, so that's something I do need to still um, invest in for this mask. But we do have a very rough shape, and just for the heck of it, I've decided I'm going to go with one more in that chin because I've just got it loosely on these edges. I figure one in the center, that should hold it on there pretty good. I didn't get it quite center, but that's okay. The Krylon paint's gonna cover it all. It's not gonna be that noticeable. But there. So I have a very crude built of my faceplate mask. And as you can see, it does fit. Now it does look a little silly because it still needs some shaping. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting out these areas for the eyes to fit my mask. And also, as you can see, I've got these right here. That's a slit and that's a slit to hold my elastic. So it's going to pull it up onto my face and I still need to put a little bit of padding on the inside there because those rivets are going to be rubbing my face as well. So I'll need to put a little bit of um, just two little strips of foam I think just to rest on my cheeks and that'll just hold it out just a tad bit. And yet I can very effectively you'll see, use a scope and a rifle with this. So. It works quite well. So anyways, there you go. That is my face mask, at least the start of it.